If you would like to purchase cheap and reliable FIFA 15 Ultimate Team coins, check out fifacoin.com uh, for automated service. You'll get instant delivery for your coins. And also, if you want 5% off, you can use my coupon code FMTV uh, to make them just a little bit cheaper. Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 36 of my FIFA 15 Road to Glory career mode with Shrewsbury. And today we are sitting top of League One, uh, looking good, but it is a top of the table clash against Brentford. They could go top if they win this, and they are playing at home, so definitely they'll be going for that. But at the same time, I have faith in my players, in our attacking ability. Our defense is pretty solid at the same time, but... I could go to think, oh, I'll play this game defensive, try and get a draw to make sure we stay top so we don't lose against them. But I just have faith in my player's ability and my ability to play with these guys now that I can win every single game in this league, though. Uh, we do have a very good developing side that's going to be... A lot of my players are going to be good enough when we get to the Premier League. That's the way I wanted to build it. Like a guy, Clinton Enyi, he's one of them. And you can see it here. He's got the skills, he got the pace, and he's got the finishing ability. And he showed them all with that goal, really. He's too good, and he's number nine. I think he'll be that for the duration. He's going to be our key striker. You've got a guy like Niklas Muller. Not sure how our formation is going to develop in the future, but he could be more of a center forward. If we play with center forward and a striker, we'll just see how that goes down either way. Uh, but I feel Clinton Enyi will be our best striker, uh, regardless if he's not the highest overall. I just feel, feel with his pace and his skills, we don't have too many skillers in the team, especially for strikers. He's the only striker with four-star skills. Yeah, he's going to be a bigger impact. He's got four goals this season. Hopefully, be able to push on and score some more for us. But going into the second half now, uh, we look to go on another attack here with Niklas Muller. See, he doesn't have the skills. He's got good dribbling and ball control, but lacks skill moves. I think it's only two. Is it two or three? I don't know, but it's not, yeah, four or more good enough to make an impact, you know. Uh, but here, they're on the ball. Uh, Nico Yanaris, the ex-Arsenal uh, youth player, I believe. I uh, used him in Football Manager once. <laughs> but anyway, they're on the attack here. And Will Grigg smashes it into the back of the net. He's actually a really good striker. Whenever I play a career mode at these lower levels, or, yeah, do a road to glory in League 2, he always seems uh, to be at the top of the scoring charts. And I think that's his ninth this season as well. There you go, ninth in the Football League 1. I'm not sure how good he is in real life. Don't really watch League One or League Two football or even Championship. Not televised in Australia, but still. Uh, yeah, do you know Yeah, if he's a good striker or yeah, how does he score? Like, how many does he score? I think he's still a relatively young player as well. 23, 24, that kind of age. But here, Clinton Enyi is our saviour. And he puts us back in the lead. And this is what I want to say. Some people uh, seem to think I should play on Legendary, which I've mentioned before that I won't. I've done that in the past. I've gone to Legendary, but it's just been too hard. It's ruined careers for me. Like, it's way harder. I end up finishing, like, mid-table, regardless of I'm a top four team or something. Just can't win games. But, yeah, the games I win, they're still close. Like, I was behind there. Like, well, we were winning and it was a draw. Um, but I had to get that goal back to get the three points. So I personally feel that I am actually playing well uh, to get these results. But when you've got a guy like Clinton Enyi, he's just playing amazingly. He's probably rated uh, good enough to play for a championship side. That's why he's dominating at League One. That's why I kind of feel we're playing so well. We have a team that's good enough to compete in championship. That's why, obviously, we're doing so well. At the minute, signings, in my opinion, I think they've been pretty good, uh, the way I've got the players in. But look at that strike, always just moving away from the keeper. He was never going to get to it, especially with the power it had as well, late in the game, and now the game is finished off. So it's not like I'm winning like 5-0 every single game or something. Uh, it's definitely a tight contest. Uh, our best players, like our good attacking players, just really uh, proving to be the difference, I feel. Uh, which I like. Like, I don't feel the games are too easy. That's probably the most important factor um, for me personally anyway. I don't feel like I'm cruising in the game. See, they still have chances like that. They're going to pick up a free kick here, actually. This could actually prove to be very, very interesting. Who's going to step up to take it for them? Who knows? If they score from this, injury time to score another, it's Jota. I'm not sure who he is. His name sounds Spanish, but... Yeah, sounds Spanish, but it's just a guess. Any... Misses that. It looks like Alan Antonio saved that, but it actually just went over the bar. He didn't make contact. He looks like he's so tall. He's six foot eight, isn't he? 
uh, by my memory, Alan Antonio. He's absolutely amazing. One of the best, definitely, youth goalkeepers I've used that I've scouted and gotten to the team. And it's scary he's only going to get better. Like, he feels, I'm not going to say like a world-class goalkeeper. That would be getting a bit too excited. Uh, but he's a good goalkeeper. He makes good saves. So, and he's really tall. Uh, that will assist to that, of course. Uh, but I can't believe he's actually going to be a high-rated player in the future with this high potential, like 80s. <laughs> It'll be crazy at the Premier League level. Come on, finish it, Mope. Mope puts it home. He was coming on there. He came on the ground, substituted uh, for Niklas Muller, and he comes on and makes an impact. And he scored some goals this season as well. Uh, we've got three really alternate options, you know, even James Wilson, so four. But Neil Mope, he's got the most goals this season, six goals. Uh, in the league, he's been really, really impressive, like, he's not a guy with killer pace, even though he's still got good physicals, his actual sprint speed attribute isn't the highest, it's in the low 80s, but the other ones are pretty high, like, high 80s, I think he's got balance that's in the 90s, low 90s, something like that, uh, but yes, it's time to move on to the next game, uh, we've got Chesterfield, uh, hopefully it can be another win for us, uh, just checking out the league table, I was considering, yeah, to sim this one because obviously uh, we're playing at home. So I just wanted to make sure the team was set up well and all of that. So I'm going to try and get that uh, from now. Obviously, I can't say a certain amount because I don't know what home games I'm going to play. I'll simulate the home games unless, like I said, it's like a Brentford game or something and it's a must win. Uh, they're like in the top six at least. I'll play those games. But the rest, I'll sim, as you can see, against Chesterfield. Uh, it should be a win for us, though. You can see their recent form not being able to win in the last three. Uh, two losses and a draw. So we should win this, and we do two goals. Uh, Mope scores again, and also Dimitru comes up with a goal. And Nicholas Muller happy with playing at the last match. See, everything seems to be going smoothly here. Anthony Stokes, uh, he is a decent player. He'd be a decent player for us. He's 73 overall. Uh, Aaron Duran as well. He's pretty quick. Got Not really quick, but he's got really good balance. Balance really important. That's something that Mope has, and obviously he shows how good he is. And we've got an injury as well. Who's that? It's a pull hamstring. Uh, just seven days for Jordan Lawless. And again, that's something probably EA need to alter. Uh, seven ha A pulled hamstring is usually a minimum a few weeks, three or four weeks to come back from that. But yeah, pull hamstring. So that's something they could alter as well. Very minimal, but just to be realistic, pulled hamstring much longer than a week. Uh, here's our current youth squad. Pretty small right now. We can't afford to have too many to sign them all up. Uh, Gary Dixon looking all right by the next May update. It may look all right, no pun intended. Matthias Fernandez could be a good fullback, attacking fullback, and Paul Hekwe, talk about the May update. If he doesn't want to leave the U squad until then, wow, he's going to be an absolute amazing player for us the following season. He could up to have definitely uh, somewhere in the 70s uh, coming into the team uh, next season. And again, he's going to be someone who's uh, poorer on the physical side. Uh, but he could be even high 70s, depending yeah how good his May update is. Uh, but we've got more scout reports. Just so many youth players coming around the team right now. But no one too amazing. Junior Freighter, I think his name is. He's probably on the edge there, on the cusp. Just want to see another update next month and see if his yeah, potential changes or anything. And again, scouting or getting an update uh, from Ireland. Uh, we'll see if we get anyone good here. Looks pretty poor until we run into Mark Miller. His strengths look really good, like the dribbling, ball control, acceleration, free kick accuracy, and sprint speed. Minimum potential of 75, and of course, the maximum of 94. He's one who could be special. He's only 4 foot 11 right now, but just show you, just so you know, um, you guys that don't know, a lot of, if you play career mode, a lot you probably do know but if you're new to it uh youth players can actually grow uh, by the time you actually sign them up to your team uh like i had with i think it was nicolas muller he went to like 5 7 to 5 11 or just something like that at a uh, quick guess, and yeah, to show you a squad report here as well, uh, Goldson look amazing, Apara actually went up, Dimitru going up, Udamadi up to a 69 overall, really quick, and now he's developing into, yeah, just a better player overall wise, Joey Edwards, uh, really good pre-contract signing, uh, also Greg Wilde, another one of those, Nicholas Muller, he's almost 70 overall already, and he's only 16, Clinton and Ye, uh, looking pretty sweet, so he's actually a lower rating <laughs> than uh, who is Niklas Muller, uh, which is hard to believe. He's just so good. And Neil Mopay, Neil Mo see, that's what I mean. He's got some high physicals, but the sprint speed is only 83. Uh, Nathan Aki is really good loan signing for us this season. Demarai Byron, um, he as a youth player is probably 
the one that goes under the radar the most because you've got Nicholas, not Nicholas, yeah, Nicholas Muller and our goalkeeper, Alan Antonio, and even Jordan Lawless, probably both of them. Jordan Lawless is interesting. Look at the, his physicals are going down. But yeah, he's an interesting one because he's got five star skills. Josh Janelli, young player who starts with us, he's really quick. Yeah, him and Kayton are not really getting a chance uh, because a guy like Greg Wilde, left midfield, uh, was signed and he's better as a player, a bit more experienced. But yeah, his overall is just better in general, a bit older. So I have my confidence in him. And you can see, look at the table now. We're seven points clear. Brentford. Uh, have gone down a bit now. Uh, Bradford is actually second, but we're seven points clear now. So yeah, this is great. We can definitely start to simulate uh, a lot more games now this season, but I don't want to like simulate the rest of the season or something crazy. Uh, just, yeah, like I said, a lot of home games I will simulate and play a majority of away games, of course. Uh, it's just a case-by-case -case situation, depending who we're playing against. If it's a good team or if it's a beatable team, I'll simulate it if it's at home, you know. So, uh, But this game against Portsmouth, again, uh, not too much action going to... Uh, towards the end of the first half, uh, 30 minutes played, and here will be our first chance. Look at this, Clinton and Yee again. He starts with a little bit of a skill, I suppose you can say, and it just yeah starts with that burst of pace. And how does he create all that space? And look at that little body feint there to get past the Portsmouth defender. And don't forget, uh, we were both in League Two last season. But look at the last one he got past. That I love that when I did that. I'm like, no way, that was amazing. So yeah, he finished off greatly, and there wasn't actually must much action so you see I got that goal it may look easy but I couldn't get the breakthrough and look at that tackle very dangerous tackle and that's going to be a second yellow uh, for another Portsmouth uh, player there uh, who's that that got the red card he's off he's off Dan Butler I think he's a young guy as well uh, picks up his second yellow and he is off so that's what I mean there uh, this kind of game where it, I seem to score an easy goal because, uh, yeah, I just ran past the defenders and everything like that with ease as we whip one in here. And James Wilson is just the just Johnny on the spot there uh, to find the back of the net. And I like that celebration there. just shows, like, the team camaraderie uh, when they do a cool celebration. But anyway, uh, yeah, like I was going to say, we score what seemed like an easy goal, but we didn't score another goal until the dying minutes in injury time, uh, where they, after they got a red card as well, James Wilson, so, uh, he did well to find the back of the net once again, like I said, he was just on the spot to finish, it was a pretty good free kick, didn't go in, uh, but it forced, uh, yeah, important save, but it couldn't do, yeah, couldn't do enough, uh, to keep it out, so, when I'm, in my opinion, how I feel when I'm playing the game, we're not dominating, I don't feel we're dominating the game, which I still want to improve, I want to step up to the next level, and you really murder some teams, maybe on the, uh, shots on target we did, but I just couldn't find the back of the net. Uh, Joe Edwards had another very good game. I talked about him before, how he's been a good pre-contract signing, go under the radar, not scoring or assisting a lot, just being a real good central midfielder, working hard. He's that kind of type with a high stamina, all of that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Drop a like if you would like to see another and some more FIFA career mode videos, and I shall see you guys in the very next one.